Hello mate and welcome back to List Code. This time it's personal and in this episode, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and correct a couple of errors that we might have accidentally put into our code. First one is on the character screen. You'll notice that there's a small r on this return. So we need to change that for a big one. And we also need to enclose this return in a set of brackets. Otherwise that won't work. Also inside our navigation screen, all you might notice is that I might have accidentally untabbed that load section there. So you need to make sure that we encompass this inside these um, brackets here. However, what I'm going to do is I'm we want to be able to do our load inside the main menu as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut that from there going to return that and I'm going to paste that there so that it comes in before the save and that way we'll remove any errors that we had in this bit of code and we will also include uh, the load screen directly below the start screen so it's start load then save that makes more sense to me anyway what we also need to do is remove this elif statement because it doesn't need to be there we're simply going to have if it's the main menu it's going to go show us start and load if it's not the main menu then it's going to show us a save and the option to go to main menu. What I might actually do is change this around a little bit more later on so that you can load from inside another game. But for now, this will work. So before we go any further, I'd like to say a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That always helps me out. And of course, an even big thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running up the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to hit the join button next to the subscribe button and become a channel member, or you can visit the Patreon listed in the description down below and support me that way as well. Always appreciated regardless. So if we look inside our main UI file, we can see that we're actually calling a screen that we haven't defined yet, and that is contextual. And that's actually just placeholder text because what I want to do is have a slightly more complex way of displaying that particular part of the user interface. But in order to do that, we need to kind of lay down some foundations or build a framework. On that, we're going to build other things on top of it. So what we're going to do is inside our screens file, we're going to create a new file there. And we're just going to call this one contextual generic. And then that can be our basic file upon which everything else is born. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a screen and we're just going to call this contextual generic like that. Call that as a screen there and then we can go. So what we do next is I'm just going to create a frame here and then inside that frame I'm going to use the term transclude like so. And what we're saying is that when you use this screen and you can basically add on to the end of it inside that frame. So this is going to be like the bubble in which everything that we put inside it is built. And then what we want to do below that is we're going to define some styles. So we'll call style and we'll call this one contextual underscore frame. And then we can add a colon and then we can add some things to it. So we need to decide where we're going to put our things. But before I do that, I'm very going to quickly call this style underscore prefix and then we'll just put in there contextual and that just tells rempy to use these styles for this kind of frame so the contextual menu is going to take place on the right hand side of the screen and perhaps on the bottom as well I would say the majority of the buttons will be in a frame on the right hand side of the screen so what we'll do is we'll say why align and we'll say 1.0 and then X align and we'll put it in the bottom right hand corner. So we'll say 1.0 that way and then we can move it around if we need to. Next thing we're going to do is give it some padding. So we'll say padding and we'll give it two values. I'm going to give it a padding value of maybe a seven by seven, seven across, seven up. That will work just nicely. And then we don't need to define a background just yet. We can change that if we need to. And then we just want to choose the size that this frame is going to be because it's going to be con constant. If it keeps changing in size, it's going to look really jarring. We want it to look like it's a permanent part of our user interface. So I'm going to give it an X size. Hmm. Let's give it an X size of 500 for now. And let's give it a Y size. I don't know if we can spell size. 
of, let's say, uh, 800 for now. No, that's quite big, isn't it? Let's go with 600, like so. And then we've got frame. A frame that's going to appear on the right hand side of our screen it's going to be 500 across by 600 down and inside that frame is going to be all of our buttons in the form of some kind of grid and the contents of that are going to change dependent on the character that we have selected so if we come back and look at our defines and defaults we already have a value for selected so what we can actually do further down the line is we can simply have a screen uh, named or rather a screen that uses our contextual generic as its framework and the contents will be populated dependent on whom is selected and you can adjust and define that in various different ways that we're going to look at a bit further down the line. So the next logical step for us is to start defining the buttons that we're going to put into our user interface and we're going to do that again using a class. So we're going to come to the bottom of our classes which is just about here and we can go in between all of these like so. Tab in and then just come there and we're going to define a new object. So we're going to say class and this one's going to be a UI button something along those lines and it's going to inherit from object and then we're going to say define the init like so and the first thing is obviously going to be self now what we want to do is define a name so that we know what the button is going to be called we also need to have maybe a nice name just in case we have the ability to put some text on the screen next thing we want to do is have types so we're going to create some archetypes of different types of people different types of personalities and dependent on the type of person that we have, we can display different types of buttons. Now we could have just all of the buttons appearing at the same time, which is fine. Um, but I think just only displaying the buttons that are relevant to that type of person might be more beneficial to start with. And we can always change that because what we can do is still display all the buttons and then what we can say is if the button you're clicked on is related to the person that you have selected and they are of a type that's contained within this class's type then it will increase the stat and if they're not within this type of button then we can decrease the stat so what we can also add is a multiplier like so so for example we have three different types of interaction of a similar type we can add a multiplier which is also another way of saying a difficulty then the stat that we increase will be increased by that amount so in that case we also need to put a stat value in there like so and then we can come back and add some more things later so we're just going to say self.name equals name self.nice name equals nice name self dot types equals types self dot multiplier equals multiplier self dot stat equals stat and we're going to make sure that we correct our mistakes as we go as much as we can see them it is inevitable that much like the two that we fixed at the beginning of this video we're going to make some typos as we go along so what we'll do is we test run the code at the moment we have nothing to display on the screen the game will barely you know it, because it can be considered you, you click on the start game and it goes straight to the end of the game there's nothing in there at the moment however we can still by running the game we can still test to see if our code has any errors in it that is picking up straight away and then that will at least help minimize the problems that we have further down the line all right so i'm just gonna add a little bit of white space there a little bit of white space there just so we can see this apart from all of the others so what we can do now is we can add a UI buttons uh, list like that and then when we need to populate them we can do that there and obviously we need to in create a new property because we actually need icons to represent our buttons so we'll say property and then we will just say uh, button uh, no we can't that's a reserved word so we'll just say um, icon there we go that's not a reserved word icon so we actually need to say define icon silly me define icon and then self like so 
we don't need any global variables for this. All we need to do is say output text equals and then open some square brackets. We're going to just pop that there. And we can say, in fact, UI forward slash buttons forward slash. And then we'll just say context just in case. And then we can add that there dot PNG. And then we'll just say dot format. And the value we're going to put in there is name. So when we give these a name, we have to bear in mind that we can't put special characters or anything like that in there because it's also going to comprise of our file name. And then we'll just say return output text. So now when we ask which icon to display on the screen for each button, then we know which one is going to, or we know what the icon, the file name of the icon is going to be. So nice and simple there, nothing overly complicated. So at this point, we need to really start doing some thinking, doing some forward planning, because we've defined our frame as a set size, but it doesn't necessarily have to stay that way. We have to define how many actions are going to be available when you have a person selected. And then we also need to decide on how big the icons are going to be. And that will then help us clarify what the frame size needs to be. We also need to decide whether or not we're going to have an extra another menu, a sub menu, a nested menu appearing once we've clicked on an interaction. Say, for example, we have a talk button. Do we want that just to be the generic action or do we want then further options to be appearing in that menu so we can say we're going to talk to them, but we're going to talk to them in a flirty way. Are we going to talk to them in an aggressive way? Are we going to talk to them in a trollish way? Whatever. So that's the point we need to do some forward planning. So what I would recommend to you to do at this point is to actually stop coding, sit down with a pen and a piece of paper or a text file like we've done for our planning file and have a bit of a think about how you want to display these things on the screen, what you want them to look like. And it wouldn't hurt to start compiling a set of icons that you're going to use for the kind of interactions that you're going to have available for your characters. That about wraps it up for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And in the next episode, we will continue building our game. So I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.